in the book of James, chapter number 1, beginning with verse 21. The book of James, chapter number 1, beginning with verse 21. Touch my heart, Lord. Pull my hand, Lord. Guide my feet, Lord. Touch my body, Lord. Work it out for us, Lord. And while we're on this teaches journey. Don't know about you, but I need Jesus to walk with me. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Church. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The book of James, chapter number one, beginning with verse, let's go back to 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift yes, to hear, yes. slow to speak, slow to wrath or anger. For the wrath or anger of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness a superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted or implanted word which is able because God is able to save your soul but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own sin. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forget what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your will and your way. Now, Father, we pray that you move Dennis out of the way. Let your man serve it. Sit down and let your Holy Spirit stand. All right. Send your word and heal us. Send your word and deliver us. Send your word and encourage us, Lord Jesus. Make us better. Prop us up on every lean inside. Send truth and grace. Thank you, Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the precious Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Verse 22, but be ye doers of the word. Verse 25, but be a doer of the work. This season, God is saying to us that we ought to be about perfecting His dream in 2015. Yes, right, God. None of this, God is saying to us today that yes, it all begins 
with a dream. It all begins with a vision because without a vision, without a dream, the people perish. Yeah. Yes, it all starts with a dream that as a man dreameth in his heart, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It all begins with how we think. A dream is a series of thought. A dream is a revelation. And we're about being about God's revelation and God's dream for our lives in 2015. If you don't dream right, if you don't think right, you can't talk right. And if you can't talk right, you can't walk right. It all starts with a dream. God is telling us today that I need you to do more than just dream. And dreaming is important. Dream is a must. How we think is critical to how we live. But we got to be more than just a dreamer. God is calling us today to be a dream doer. That's the subject of this sermon. Be a dream doer. If I had to use a subtopic, I would say it's more than an ocean. Maybe you've heard that saying, it's more than an ocean. I'm reminded of a little story I like to tell from time to time about four frogs sitting on a log near a pond and the four frogs started to take a notion. Yeah. One frog took a notion and said, I believe I'll just jump in and enjoy this beautiful pond. <laughs> Some time went by and then a a another frog took a notion and decided, well, I think I'll take a swim too. And so the question I raise to you now is, how many frogs are still on the log? Some of you are thinking too, but I want you to know that there's still four frogs still on the law. Because taking a notion about something, doing something are two different things. I came to let you know today that it's more than a notion. You got to be a dream doer. You, 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 you got to have a plan, but you got to do more than just play. You got to learn how to work your plan. See what the Bible makes clear in the book of James is that a faith without works is dead. Yeah, yeah. James, this older half brother of the Lord Jesus the Christ, he makes it plain that hey, hey guys, listen, it's more than an ocean. It's, it, it's more than what you uh, 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 sit up and dream about and, and plan in your mind. It, it, it's more than what comes off of your lips. Words are powerful. You gotta have the right words because uh, with your words you can call things into existence that, that be not like they already are, but it's more than just what you think and what you say. James said it's deeper than that, it's more than a notion. It's about what you do. Faith without action is deep. But notice what James says. He's, he says it two different ways. He said, listen, but, but be doers of the word of God. Pack what the word of God said and be about that. No, don't be here as only deceiving your own self. And how many dreams have died in our minds and in our hearts because we never became a dream doer. And you see, a, a dream with a no action is the death of a dream. In verse 25, he said, I, I want you to know that whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, into the word of God, and, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, Lord have mercy, yeah. but a doer of the work. You gotta be a, a, a doer of the word. You gotta be a doer of the work. You gotta be about what God has called us to do. Oh, this is the man that, that shall be blessed yeah. in his deed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Faith without works is deed. Yeah. 
James keeps right on talking. If you, if you read over in chapter number 2, verse 26, it says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. If you back up a little bit, he, he has this argument going. He said, oh, you might say, I, I'll show you my faith without my works. And he said, I'll show you my faith by my works. Somebody said it's more than an ocean. Well, you see, salvation is free, we say. But it costs something to be a disciple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, salvation is free. It's, it's by grace through faith, Paul writes in Ephesians 2 and 8. Even this faith he's talking about, uh, that, that we work out uh, our salvation uh, uh, causes us to be about doing something. It, it comes by grace through faith, and, and faith is action. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We say salvation is free, but it, it costs Jesus something. Yeah, yeah. We, we've been redeemed. Uh, our salvation didn't cost us anything, but it cost the Lord yeah. his life on a hill called Golgotha. It, it, it cost him uh, to submit to the Father's will and, and let evil men be all night long. Amen. Wicked folks spit on him. Scandalize his name and, and gamble over his garment. Salvation is free for us, but it costs him something. Not only that, he came back and said to us, Yeah, I, I have redeemed you, but please understand it costs something yes, to be a disciple. Yes. Don't you hear the Lord say in Matthew 16 and verse number 24 that? That, that if you want to come after me, uh, if you want to be my disciple, uh, uh, let a man deny himself. Uh, uh, let a man deny his selfish ways. Let, let a man uh, uh, get done with, I got to have it my way or no way. Let, let a man uh, submit himself under the mighty hand of God and take up his cross. And follow me. All I'm saying is that it costs something to be a disciple. And it, it's going to cost you something to achieve your dream. Yes, yes. I don't know that the remote control can help you. <laughs> I don't know if your lazy boy recliner can help you. You gotta think right, you gotta talk right, you gotta you, you gotta love right in your heart, but at the end of the day, it costs you something to be a disciple. Uh, the Bible is clear that if you're a disciple of Jesus the Christ, not only are you in love of God, but you're in love of man. And John writes and said, that's how you know my disciples, because they love the brethren. They love them with a pure love. They, they love one another with an unconditional love. They, uh, they understand that we all have weaknesses and faults, but we love one another. We love God so much. We, we love his work so much. We're willing to give. We're willing to give what is holy unto God because we know it's going to cost us something. I believe that's one of the reasons why David could be called a man after God's own heart. Uh, because he loved God so deeply. He was in a deep relationship with God, even though he had faults. When he was wrong and he was confronted with his faults, he was fast to get it right with God. You read in 2 Samuel chapter number 24, verse 24, where King David is having a conversation with a Zebusite by the name of Arana. And, and he needed his threshing floor and, and a place and some oxen so that he could offer up a burnt offering unto God. And, 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 and the man told the king, he said, King, all that I have is thine. Uh, just take my threshing floor and take my oxen and do what you will. And, and King David said, No, no, no. I will surely pay the full amount 
for what I'm going to use to make my sacrifice unto God. And, and David said, I will not give God something that costs me nothing. But, but I'm seeing folks in the house of God who, who want something from God for nothing. I uh, want to soak up God's blessings and, and want God to hear and answer their prayers. They want God to heal their body. And they want to go to heaven, but uh, they want to not give God what God said is holy unto him. I want somebody to know today that is not my word, but it's God's word. Uh, if you're going to be a disciple of Jesus to Christ, uh, it's going to cost you something. Uh, it's going to cost you uh, the giving up of your time. Uh, you can't run all around and do whatever you want to do. Uh, and then with what little time you have left over, decide you're going to give it to God. Uh, and thank God it's going to be pleased with that. Uh, God said, no, no, you got to give me the first fruits. Uh, uh, give me the best of your time. Uh, uh, give me the time uh, when your mind is the sharpest. Uh, uh, give me your time uh, uh, when you're not worn down uh, and ready to go to sleep. Uh, uh, give me your time when you're energetic uh, and you can get something done for the Lord. Uh, and he said, give me the best of your talent.